What's up, everybody? It's boy Ooh Sam, of course, back again, once again, with the homie Kai. Let me say it one more time for the due diligence. We are back again, once again. Hope y'all doing great today. Yes, yes, elephant in the room, not so elephant like, but obviously, yes, it's been a month, but we did warn you guys. Fair, fair warning, we did warn you guys. A lot of changes been going on, a lot of things been happening, especially with the homie Kai. Speaking of Kai, Kai, how you doing, sir? I'm chilling. I finally made that big move, so I'm just settling yes. in, as you know. Yes, that is that is what we like to hear. As that is that is good, good things on the on the up and up, in uh in in all on all our, on all our lives. I'll be moving soon myself, but it, it won't be as massive as uh as Kai's because I did buy a big move last year. So here we are now. Damn, that was both a on the same. Year ago. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Jeez. Like pandemic is crazy. This this whole uh, pandemic era has really made it seem like we've been in a time chamber. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> All right? So, but yes. So, of course, as you guys know, since the last time we spoke here to you guys uh, via the podcast, we were reviewing the last chapter, which was actually no. What what was it? Oh no, yeah, we yeah. were. It was chapter seventy five. Um, usually, we're slowly. And turning it back into that whole monthly review type stuff, even when we have full intention on bringing this podcast to you guys weekly, but you know, life just kind of happens um, and whatnot, but it is what it is. And uh, we're here now. We do appreciate everybody that has been keeping up with this podcast. We've been keeping up with us um, that comment and whatnot. And you guys can actually, you know, put in your comments if you're on or if you're one of our special audio only listeners via spotify or apple music or apple podcast whatever they call that john nowadays um you can feel free to reach out to us directly via email because there's no you know chat section on any of those platforms so you can reach out to us with any of your comments concerns or possible episode topics or anything that you kind you guys want us to dissect at all at full power pod at gmail.com and once again fullpowerpod at gmail.com and we'll be more than happy to check that out speaking of comments we're actually going to go over some of the ones from last month first and some and and, and I, maybe i'll leave this other one that's from at my actual reaction on my my youtube channel uh we'll leave that one for later but because it does have everything to do with the this month's chapter chapter 76 all in all um and that's something i was actually looking forward to bringing up in this episode with kai today so hope you guys uh stay tuned look forward to that but yeah normally we do leave the comments section for the end this time around we're, we're changing up we'll do that first so let's see first things first <laughs> I'm already laughing because sometimes you guys be saying some funny stuff. I'm not going to lie. No offense, but, you know, got to laugh when I got to laugh. <laughs> so let's see. So this dude says it would be cool if Oatmeal uploaded himself into 7-3. Thoughts? What? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where did you even read that? Like, I'm so lost. Like <laughs> Yo, it's the last, <laughs> our last episode. Uh, yeah, man said the first one. He says it would be cool if Oatmeal uploaded himself into seven three. It's like oh, one of the no, first bro. ones. I mean, to each their own. I guess. Yeah, I don't really have anything to add outside of the things that Kai said. Not gonna lie, but I don't. I don't know about that one. I guess is what I'll. I'll, I'll chime Yo, in. Yo, I feel with. like I just got like blindsided during an interview. Yo, facts. They'd be asking you them like random questions that have nothing to do with the job <laughs> or your your credentials, right? Right. Okay, so this next person says something that's actually pretty pretty. I will I will say this is, is I will say this is a, a decent one, right? They say, "Don't forget, Vegeta did not master his new form with the eyes emojis." Mm. So, what, what do you think that they're trying to allude to? I mean, that's that's a pretty fair point, especially the way Dragon Ball is working. They're very cookie cutter, as we all know. So mm -hmm. I, I really wouldn't pass. I wouldn't put it past them to, you know, give him something extra. That's his completed, mastered, perfected 
whatever. Right. Right. So yeah. And we'll definitely get to that. We'll definitely get to that because there's more about that that I definitely want to talk about that has everything to do with the late the recent chapter oh, yeah. and the and the highlighted comment that I really want to talk about i'm like i'm like hyping up this comment for you guys like <laughs> like it's not some some next level stuff but it, it is good. very good you, i don't know yeah. what this comment is so we're gonna find out all right 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 as far as this one it goes um yeah i definitely i definitely agree with 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 the illusion that okay yeah this this there's, there's definitely something else that, that that will possibly happen later on so we'll see i'm sure it'll happen in this arc too it's not like they're gonna hold off on us now um, it's it's been a minute so i can't remember exactly um the like the 100 percent context that we were talking about it in from last episode but we yeah. were talking about you know goku's various powers and all stuff like that and we had mentioned something about we haven't seen him like heal himself whatever shout out to the person that totally reminded us because both of us forgot he did heal himself when he fought Beerus like the first time and he was red right yeah i and so there's sometimes things like that kind of like yeah go under the radar low key um but it, it is good it is good to be reminded of things like that For because sure. stuff like that you know, it's like, like you know like when you when you think of goku you don't ever think of him healing himself like you know what i'm saying like you think of him doing kaioken and super saiyan and vegeta's the one out fist. here le who learned his healing and he's not even putting it to use that's facts that's, None of that that's spirit energy, facts. John, like carried over to this arc. He just left it there with Moro. Yeah. All right. So this next one, this next comment, we only have a few in this one, so we'll, we'll 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 breeze by these. They say, "I know that we are here for Dragon Ball Super and Vegeta, but <laughs> have you been able to see Vegeta's new Super Saiyan Blue form in Super Dragon Ball Heroes?" Next. I <laughs> you, say, you say next. Next. <laughs> oh my okay well right so the answer the, my answer for you uh is no i had i actually haven't my actually loki i feel like i have but it's already been a month and if i did see it it was probably in passing on twitter and i just kept scrolling anyway because i'm, I'm tired of seeing this the, these 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 things that are happening in, for this freaking game you understand like <laughs> Cause that's what it's for ultimately you know that that anime is literally to promote that game solely for that game they have no other uh intentions outside of that so you know it's almost like you could you, you could even say that i'm a little salty oh, i'm sure that's is it kind of like how my brother always feels about it because brother ooch he's over there like you know he never wants to see any of it for the for, the, for that reason is that if they, he knows that if it happens there it's like a hundred percent chance of it not happening in the actual source material, yeah. which which is a shame because sometimes they be doing stuff that we would love to see on screen. You know, the fact that they had Golden Cooler, I'm like, all right, they're getting they're getting too close now because I want Platinum Frieza. So if they do Platinum next, I'm gonna be tight. I'm not gonna lie. You know, you gotta do the whole you gotta do the whole diamond thing. You know, you gotta work your way up there facts you know what i'm saying we, we save the colors of the rainbow for the source material all right i want to see you know get out of here with this Yo, speaking of color uh, predictions though i did see a, a picture of somebody drew up on instagram of uh vegeta's new form but they gave him golden eyes and i was like ooh, that ooh. right like with the purple and okay. everything like that that would just be so that would be so royalty that'd be so godlike and that's so you know Thanks. not what goku's rocking right now so i would fuck with that if they if they ended up giving him the gold eyes you know silver and gold that would that would be dope actually yeah i i 100 agree with that <laughs> I'm like reading this. This is before I even say it, right? This dude goes, Vegeta with his hairline and no eyebrows reminds me of the whole time Monkey D dragon. Like, I can't unsee it. I feel like that might be a One Piece reference, but I, think I don't watch One Piece. Right. Yeah, because Monkey D Luffy. So yeah. I don't know. But but yeah, I, I, I really wouldn't have anything else to add to that except the fact that you you started this comment off hella hilarious mentioning the coming at this man's hairline <laughs> and no eyebrows <laughs> so, so do, you, do you have anything to add to that one no nah, it's pretty good as is okay bet all right uh next up we have 
Massive shout out to the voice of Vegeta, Chris Sabat. Yes, big shout out to Chris Sabat. He's one of the greatest, one of the goats, for sure. Um, nice, nice dude. I've had the pleasure of meeting him in person a couple times. Same. He's been nice every time. Yep. Uh, yeah, so um, he's definitely one of the voice actors that you definitely have to appreciate. Um, just because, you know, in, 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 the, in the field that they're in, right? Like as a voice actor or just an actor in general, you'd have to imagine that with all of the cons and all the, all the other types of appearances that they might make throughout the years, they're always meeting fans and they're always having interactions with fans. And I'm 100% positive that they are being asked literally the same questions by all of us. <laughs> like over and over and over maybe it's worded differently but it's almost as if like dudes like chris they treat it they treat each and every person like it is the first time and that's kind of how you gotta be you know what i'm saying and and that that my friends is how you are that's how you essentially become um like a, a very good influential like celebrity status type of person you know like that that if you if you're trying to if you ever if you ever get to levels like him you always gotta stay humble as he is and you know treat everybody the same and that's that that's definitely a good uh thing to bring up so yes definitely massive shout outs to chris sabat mark all right so next up we have i will admit vegeta l only when i see him in base form uh, i got news for you okay yeah i got news for you right <laughs> uh this next person says he heals himself when he fought beerus okay yeah we went over that right um and then lastly vegeta is super petty so the name works okay i'm guessing they're they're referencing the ultra uh, ego. super ego or yeah whatever ultra ego oh my god dude can you can you believe that we're here in 2021 and dragon ball as a franchise has been sticking around since the freaking 80s and we out here now we're at the point where we're starting to call forms after like characteristics like ultra ego mm. i mean instinct still... is kind of goku's characteristic too because he never knows what the fuck is going on he just be hitting the shit right yeah no and like but see that 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 name right there is is like acceptable it is U ultra ego imagine though. imagine it being you know like 10 15 years ago talking about some super saiyan 3 super saiyan 4 and someone just walking up like no actually the best form is ultra ego nah yeah i, I would be like i would probably look at that person sideways and then i would leave because <laughs> I, I i try my best not to even engage with, with dudes like that or people like that in general just because uh, i'm there's... sick you know why i'm sick because the form looks so <laughs> nice but the name is so bad it's a balance. It's like it's like you can't have everything, you know. I mean, it's Vegeta, so no, of course we can't. Facts that oh that hurts. <laughs> I'm All right. sorry to say it. No, you don't 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 be sorry because we we keep it real out here. We're full power. We do out of control. All right, we we have, even out of control. We're in control because it's us. We're the ones driving behind the wheel, two steering wheels. Where you at? You don't even know. Exactly. We're now gonna review the chapter. Let's get it. Okay, so again, thank you guys for the comments. Now, this one should be easy to go over just because there was a lot of action. Uh, this chapter is called The Fate of the Saiyajins. Okay, so let's see here. So it starts off with Vegeta struggling. He's really getting worked by double pew pew granola. Okay, he's got both his eyes fully activated so the ceruleans they their uh their 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 visual power up is within their eyes it looks like which is kind of neat it's different um he's shooting vegeta vegeta's trying to roll around or he's he's being rolled around sorry um granola is just like too too quick for him we see vegeta get powered down to his base form 
and this is when the dialogue starts this you know begins he's like no more super ego whatever you called it the universe has proven me right since fate has clearly decided what you saiyans are doomed to die right and this whole th this is kind of where uh i realize now that we're you know going over it is this is kind of the theme of the chapter it's like the whole um fate the question of fate right like what is the fate of the saiyans and what is the fate of ceruleans and you know what now these are kind of the ideas that i i'm getting right now um going over this so of course vegeta fights back he's grabbing him by the ankles and he goes i am the master of my own fates and i'm like okay okay let's go let's see something right so even when he tries to bring it back Granola was still smacking him up. And then it, it it took Goku to save his ass right here and there. Mind you, he's in Super Saiyan Blue. It's so crazy how you can tell through black and white what their forms are. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I, <laughs> I That's a skill I feel like all Dragon Ball fans have to uh, acquire at this, <laughs> at, this, at this stage. Because, like, that's I think it's funny, low-key. It's like... How, how are you gonna tell a black and white image what form they're in outside of the dialogue? But we have, we have the cues. So he's in Super Saiyan Blue right now. Vegeta's all surprised. Granola's like, you again. You're still on your feet. And then, you know, Goku, of course, this is like the, the usual Saiyan tag-in that everyone knows and loves where they're about to, uh, you know, switch it up. However, Vegeta, this time around, he decides, nah, nah, nah. Last time, you, last time, you, you, it was, it was my turn. You took, you took the turn, and defeated Frieza when it was clearly my kill. You know what I'm saying? This time, Vegeta's turning the tables on Kakarot over here, and he kicks him right in the side, and he goes, not if I have a say, right? So he's trying, and he duffs him straight to the face. Now this, now this is the little thing that I. uh I didn't really appreciate when I first read it. I didn't realize first read or read through. But my man Vegeta does Super Saiyan Blue Goku in base form. I was just like, okay, okay, Vegeta. Like, we gotta give some appreciation and some uh, and some uh, limelight to that because I, I think that that's kind of fire for what it's worth. What what are your what are your thoughts on everything so far? I mean, as far as that last one, I don't think that hit was anything worth it. Goku never pays the fuck attention. He got blindsided like he always does. <laughs> like, okay, Vegeta, yeah, you're right. Vegeta's half asleep. Look at his eyes right now. Like Facts. But yeah. That's true. The whole fight is like the the artwork is absolutely fire. I do like, yes. uh, I like where the dialogue is, you know, taking things. Uh, it's a little repetitive, but it's Dragon Ball, so get used to it. Welcome, if this is your first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. I, imagine being a new fan of Dragon Ball, getting into all this stuff. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, hey, there's probably some people out there like that and like that, so. Yeah. All right, so so here, here, so here, here's some, as you were saying, with the, with the interesting dialogue, right? Um... <laughs> Vegeta goes, there's no one I'd rather beat to hell and back than you, Kakarot. Mm, preach. And go, go, yo, but Goku, he's funny. He, he, as soon as I read, come on, man. <laughs> I thought that was funny for some reason. I was, he's like, come on, man. You sure picked a moment for this old attitude. And I'm like, I'm like, yep, he definitely did. He goes, you seem confused, but know that I've only ever agreed to fight side by side when we had something to protect. And Goku's like, protect, huh? How about preserving your own life? Or are you trying to get yourself killed here? And then Vegeta's like, better that than teaming up with you. So I'm not gonna lie. So before, obviously the next part of this is, is that the Granola is uh, already on the on the uh, offense again, right? He's trying to attack Go uh, Vegeta's vitals, it looks like. Um, and uh, Go it looks like Goku like saves him by like, it looked like it, so this is yeah. the thing with the I artwork think he did one right of those it was invisible energy waves and like push vegeta out of it yeah like he it's like it was confusing especially going off of the the art panels and whatnot because goku raises his hands out to vegeta but then the next shot is is uh like 
granola striking uh vegeta's side abdomen not directly in the center so like what we later find out like through the dialogue of course is like he goku's like pretty much saying like he's got to read on you know like on on how granola's things work he you target the vitals and and Goku, like, essentially, like, he's able to shift your vitals around. Yep. I'm like, what? There goes that Goku privilege. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'd rather it be him just, he just moved Vegeta out of the way. Like, why are we, why are we giving Goku more things? Like, oh, I can move my organs and my vitals around. And, <laughs> like, I can restructure bone structure. And, like, What? Like soon he's gonna start blood bending. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> he's the he's the last airbender. You know, like it's come on. Like let's let's stick to. I mean, let's not forget. You know, we don't know what he's gonna get in Smash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, let's 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 get to that bridge eventually. Hopefully soon in in some lifetime, right? <laughs> right. But so let me digress a little bit. So with with the with all the dialogue that I just I just mentioned, right? At this point in time, and we're only 10, 10 fucking pages in, I'm already like starting to get a little pissed, right? Because this whole back and forth that Vegeta and Goku had, I was just like, are we really doing this right now? Like, are we it, really it, doing this again right now? Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I'm like, look, I'm like, we already know how Vegeta has been throughout his course of his keywords here. Ready for this character? development okay so character regression thank you thank you this is literally what i was saying in my reaction video so if you haven't checked that out please go check it out on my youtube channel because i was i was very i was internally well not even internally i was externally struggling with reading this chapter because i was just like i feel like this is a humongous step back for vegeta because this dude has been known over the last several years to be probably the best character in Dragon Ball right now because he has the best character development, his story, all of that. And it's great to think that and to feel that. And then when you read this, you're just like questioning it. Like why all of a sudden is he now going backwards and now he's making it about Goku again and he's making it about his rivalry with Goku and like I mean they're still on the whole teaming up thing being wishy-washy like not really wishy-washy they just don't they just don't do it all right like they 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 do it when they absolutely need to or if there's a movie involved right let's be real right but other than that they're always trying to do this 1v1 type stuff and now he's making it about like he now he's saying oh no like i'd rather die than team up with you like no on, on fusions some... confirmed right so but i will say that the 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 special the special highlighted comment has everything to do with with our with our thoughts here so let's just keep going so we could get we could get to that point so of course, I already uh, started to briefly mention Goku's like, I've got to read on your whole targeting our vitals thing. It's gonna, it's not gonna work on me anymore. And then of course, Granola's like, thanks for the laugh, but I'm calling your bluff. How many times have we freaking seen that with all of these characters that they are opposed against, right? Granola's on the attack. Now it's Goku versus Granola. Um, and funny enough, Goku literally gets hit in the back of the neck knocks him out powers down maybe that's a bluff right but when i read that i'm like are you kidding me <laughs> and so then granola's like you really should have stayed down the first time i put you there wait your turn i'll extract frieza's location from you in a moment granola but then granola hit yeah. him with the talk shit get hit talk shit get hit i like that uh fire okay that's very good i definitely like that so so then he did of course as you say that Granola did a little talking shit, and Goku he, he, he was delivering the hit. Monkey see, monkey do. Monkey see, monkey do. In in the flesh, it was like probably seconds after this happened. So he he uh he hits him with it with a key blast, right? And Goku, as he gets up, he's already right back to to blue. 
He's like, that same move was never going to work on me forever. And then Granola's like, what? Of course, all surprised. Granola charges at him again. He hits him right in the abdomen, right where it looked like he was targeting Vegeta from before, except it didn't have any effect on Goku because, you know, now he has the ability to move his vitals around, I guess, right? So he takes him by the arm. He punches him back. Granola gets off the ground. He's like shifting your vitals out of harm's way. He goes, yup. There's the smallest pause when you... Uh, locking onto your vitals and the attack that follows. And he goes, I can't dodge the attack completely, but at least I can shift enough to make sure you don't hit where it really hurts. And I'm just like, man, what is this? What, 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 where, where, where's, your, where's your head at right now, Kai? Like, what, what were you thinking when you was reading this? I just had to keep pushing through it because this is some, <laughs> this is some bullshit. <laughs> like, i'm not sorry this is some this is some bullshit like i can i i understand where he's coming from you know it's not like he's moving his internal organs he's just doing a little little shimmy shimmy cha cha slide in his seat right and you know he's just barely grazing barely missing wherever it would hurt so like i get it it's a whole it's a whole tactic out here but come on that's what i'm saying like I don't know. It's I like it like was, you did too. It was unnecessary. I had to power through it as well. It was completely it was unnecessary. Was unnecessary. Yeah. So, cause I yeah, I'd rather like like hold hold on hold on. You want to talk about giving Goku the ability to shift his vitals so that when he gets hurt, it doesn't actually hurt. You know, like when he gets attacked. Excuse me, it doesn't actually hurt. What? Right. This man has Ultra Instinct. They couldn't have given the vital shifting to Vegeta, who's trying to eat attacks. Facts. That's true. I would have, I would have rather them just say Goku can see where he's trying to target, so that he's so so he's just gonna shift himself or move at the right angle, so that he's not hitting the vitals. Something along those lines, because when you make it sound like this dude is a surgeon, <laughs> like. <laughs> Come on, you know, like it's, it's just getting a, it's getting a little ridiculous. So, so Granola's just like, oh, you don't say. Well, you know, still your strategy is pure defense. Without attacks of your own, you'll never manage. And then Goku cuts him off. He goes, you're not wrong. That could be a problem. Oh no, he says to surpass me. So Granola's still on his uh, high and mighty. I made a wish to be the strongest in the universe type stuff. And then we see Vegeta waking up, snapping out of it and uh getting out of what looked like a little uh goldilocks and three bears built oh brick house God. right so vegeta's noticing that him and granola are going back and forth just trading blows and whatnot he goes kakarot and so he's watching from afar and then granola not good enough decks him sends him flying back goku power down yet again that's twice ladies and gentlemen in the same chapter and then if we count vegeta that's three amazing amazing we're pretty much halfway through pretty much right so then vegeta has the the conversation with goku right and see at this moment before even reading onward i just thought to myself i'm like this is the part where they discuss doing a fusion or they discuss teaming up <laughs> but no that's not what happened at all he literally says i'm tagging in of course goku's like really why are you so obsessed with doing this alone it's just as hard to say think of it as stubborn saying pride if you want and the goku's like and you can really beat him and then we notice then we, they shot back to granola he's like huffing and puffing he's getting tired and then vegeta says he only just learned to unleash this side of his own power, so he won't last long either. Frieza 2.0. Facts, right? Like this is, oh my God. It, it's like so much, it's so much of things that we've already seen. It's like dudes that get their brand new forms and what's their weakness? Oh, they have no experience with it. So we just have to keep on fighting, I guess, right? That's the, that's the reasoning behind their ultimate demise, right? whatever we'll go with that 
So Vegeta's like, he'll most likely hit his limit soon. That'll be my opening for victory. Please allow me to do this alone. Goku agrees, naturally. Then he goes, try not to die, Vegeta. He didn't even acknowledge that. Vegeta just kept walking on forward and Goku's like, uh, he's like that face, the, uh, they didn't even need a speech bubble for that. I know exactly what he's, uh, like, it happens every time. <laughs> Every single episode, uh, every every anime, dude, every episode. That's that face, you know. Whether 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 it's Shemmel it's, doing it's it the mental or it's nani. Nazawa, it's the mental nani. Yes, yes, right, exactly, the mental nani, right. <laughs> so, Vegeta shoots up into the air to meet Granola. Granola's like you again, still fighting alone. Your kind, your your minds work in mysterious ways. I must say, she just goes, and yours isn't exactly playing with a full deck. That drive for revenge has rotted away whatever is in your head. Come again? Vegeta's like, you think you survived all this time just to take on, take revenge on us? There's nothing more to your life? And then Vegeta's like, very well. Who am I to deny this grand mission of yours? No regrets. Then hit me with everything you can muster. And then my man Power is right back up to Ultra Ego. I still hate that name. And then he goes, but, but you already hit your limit. And then my man with no eyebrows says, as I explained, this power is unbounded. It has no limits. Now See I'm that? gonna pause right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, let's talk about it. Okay, Kai. <laughs> let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> See that that was that was the most interesting place to put that line, that same word. Here we go, back at it again with this unbounded shit. What does this mm -hmm. mean? <laughs> <laughs> where are we going with this unbounded so what you can just you have you have the ability to get your ass handed to you no matter how many times you're just gonna whip out the color again i'm you know the thing that keeps me sane through all of this is just to know that you and i are on the same exact page because <laughs> dude it's not every day where you find like-minded dragon ball fans okay that's true and we already know this. We've been doing this for years. And I'm talking years like before this podcast even existed because this is just how we would talk about things, especially with Dragon Ball. And man, when I saw this, I literally said the same thing. I'm pretty sure during my reaction, I had to stop because I was just like, dude, what? Like, what does this mean? Like, is he calling? Is he bluffing right now? Because this whole unbounded thing, it has no limits. I'm not buying it. I think it's bullshit because part of this whole ego trip that he's literally on because it's within the name of his new form is like he's on his eye horse. He's on an ego trip. He's literally saying whatever to make his opponent believe it because yes, he was able to pop it up again. But guess what? How many times have we seen that? Not just with Vegeta, but with other Saiyans exactly. in general. You know what I'm saying? Like they will it's be down and out. They will be down bad. They will literally be like on the ropes. They're about to get got. And next thing you know, after some dialogue goes on, after some flashbacks and some memory <laughs> lapses, they ah, they go right back to it. And then they fight like they ate a Sansu bean. And it's like the same shit with Dragon Ball. Look, we can love it and we can also show it, show up, show it for what it is. Okay. And I like, and this is the, and this is the part where I'm just like, he has to be lying at least he has to be lying because for that to be true is like a zero percent chance of like the form having no bounds it's unlimited no limits oh so you're broly get the fuck out of here there's only one <laughs> that's a good Jeez. point broly's power if anyone's gonna be unbounded it is broly's exactly you can't have you can't listen you can't you can't steal my man's gimmick what are you you, you what nah what are you ditto this ain't pokemon son Get that like shit. broly has that shit and he kept both his hairline and his eyebrows <laughs> <laughs> vegeta been going bald using up all this power wait 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 no 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 hold on i gotta correct that shit because my man was born with that hairline, okay? Like, let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> My man came out the womb with that shit. 
All right, we we got we have evidence. We look at baby Vegeta. My man had that <laughs> shit. <laughs> but it only yeah. got like the like the 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 widow's peak only got thicker. Okay, if you want to go there, sure, why not? My man had the Majin M before exactly. the M was put That's on the best his way forehead. All right. All right. So so of course, after this power up, Vegeta goes right back to the offensive. He's going at him. He knocks Granola back into like this domed city type shit. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, they got a dome over this, this John? Like, was this always there? Or is this not, like, did we see this before? Like, I was actually confused. So, uh, let's see. So he gets hit into it, right? And it's clearly a dome because you, you, you can see from the effects of him getting uh, hit through it, it looked like it broke. It could be an energy field, even rather. I'm not. I'm thinking about it, but either way, it definitely it's broke. Yeah, it's protected, right? And he goes, "Wait, not here. Take it. Take this elsewhere." And Vegeta's like, "Oh!" And here I thought you didn't care about anything. And Vegeta, of course, still continues to beat his ass. Goku style, and chop. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so then, Granola really is trying not to have this fight here. And so, yep, just like you say, Vegeta chomps, takes a page out of freaking the monkey see monkey do everywhere, dude. I'm like, freaking God, like they can't help themselves. Freaking Vegeta's not here, not here, biting people like Goku, Goku did, bro. So he's out here trying to eat this man's arm for lunch. And I mean, hey, Granola's like, you animal. Hey, you know, you know, you a real, you a real threat. You a real villain if you get bit by a Saiyan. <laughs> facts right they, this is like this is like this is when they're at, the, at their most monkey like states right when they just start biting on people <laughs> so so he like shakes them off and then vegeta starts laughing ha 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 can't quite use your precious rapid fire moves here can you and then my man points the finger gun right at his face standing over him says at this range the city will be fine and, ah, and he starts shooting at him point blank and i was like yo he's a savage right so from a distance we see like a, a bunch of smoke you know being like you know rising up or whatever vegeta literally being uh in, ingrained into the ground knocked out again right back into the base form except this time granola one of his eyes goes back to normal so he's tired as hell at this point he falls back he sits down uh it looked like I guess an entry to a house or something. It was like a, I don't yeah, know like what a, this like was. Like a window or some shit. Yeah. So it breaks. He looks inside and he notices like a mother and a child. And the child, of course, is scared. The mother is definitely terrified. Granola looks inside. He gets alerted and instantly has a flashback. And this is where the chapter starts to get a little interesting. Because then he has that flashback to when the Saiyans were you know, destroying his town and he's running away and he goes into like what looks like a little church house. And then we see Mama Granola. So his mom is there. Mama Valley. And he run <laughs> <laughs> Mama Valley, right? So, so he runs into her arms. Mommy, you made it back to me, my little one. Yeah, the others helped me get away. And then that same look that the mother and child had he saw himself and his mom in that family and he goes ah oh no right so at this point it looks like granola's having uh, some second thoughts here but we'll get to that because then vegeta goes on to say any grudges against us saiyans are well deserved how could i object you to destroying me here and now however by eradicating the saiyans Aren't you just repeating history? Boom, the bomb drop right then and there. And I was like, oh, let them know, right? And then Vegeta says, you Cerulean's were never such a savage tribe, were you? And then Granola's like, ah, oh. like he's, he, oh, you know, you know, he's, he's ah, ah. like, he, he's like <laughs> shocked, right? I'm like hearing the anime episode right now. He goes, that's nonsense. This planet was always a peaceful one. Your people took everything from us and I'll never move past that. And then he hits him right back. And he knocks him right back out the dome. And then they, they of course, they he follows 
after him. And then this time he points the two finger guns, but together. Before he had them hands separate. Now he's pointing them together. He went from the pistols. Like, now he got the he got the sniper. Right, right. He got that sniper. Right. So he goes. I at last I found my true resolve. I'm prepared to burn away my very life here. I'll summon every bit of power to make sure you stay dead. So he's charging up the finger guns. It's looking like your, your average death ball, right? Shout outs to Frieza. And he goes, my revenge against Frieza himself will have to wait until we're both in hell. Pretty epic line, I will add. Yeah. And then Vegeta, he has a little smirk on his face. He goes, hmm, so I couldn't cut it. Apologies, Lord Beerus. I couldn't revert to the callous, unfeeling man I once was. That God of Destruction power was beyond the scope of a novice like me. And I'm just like, I read that and I look at how the scene is shot right now and drawn. And then especially when he says, this is the Saiyan's fate, so be it. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm just like, please stop. Like, this is not again. <laughs> like <laughs> not again i actually did not think that it was gonna go there at all i didn't either to be honest i i because guess what i thought we were past that <laughs> like forgive me <laughs> for thinking right like for forgive me for for believing what the what the what the groundwork that's been laid down has been right forgive me for just following the story right forgive me no like i knew men's would get washed multiple times but I was like, this is this is lining up to be something no one's trying to see. Dude, do you remember how Vegeta handled his fight with Topo and then Jiren? Let's think about that. Right. He fought till he fucking couldn't anymore. There was never a point where he was like, is this the fate of the Saiyans? <laughs> is, it, is, it, is this it? Is this it? My man, dude, he had a tear in his eye. That was probably one of Vegeta's best moments ever. Yeah. Because cuz cuz that tear was a was was a defining resembling moment of being fully aware and acknowledging what was happening. The fact that yes, at that point that tear meant that at that very moment he was being overpowered he was being bodied but the fact that he was not letting it be free he wasn't letting that shit go and he wasn't he, he was not going out without a fucking true fight and all his effort like 150 47 percent of his everything bro come on like that was Vegeta's best moment, right? This shit, what is him giving up that just like that? Like, I feel like Vegeta has fought worse, but because Granola has the whole I'm the the strongest in the universe narrative right now. Like, dude, didn't didn't we not have a chapter ago where this dude explained it to us that he said strongest in the universe only means that you're the strongest for that moment in time because all it takes is for someone like me to just be stronger than you for that second. And that's all it takes. And then that's when we got to talking. Maybe that's literally what exactly to the definition of what it is, because that's how these dudes just keep ladder affecting each other all the time with, with the, with the villains and the, the protagonists and whatnot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, this is literally like a chapter ago. He was saying this and now, that's it. He's just, this is it. This is, this, this must be the Saiyan's fate. What the fuck? Come on, dude. Like, I'm so, like, we're, we're 37 chat, uh, pages in. We're almost there, right? We're literally right at the end. We're like almost there. And I'm just like, dude, this is ridiculous, right? So I'm thinking in my head, it's over. Like, is he just gonna accept death right here and there? So Goku's like, they're both willing to die. No, don't. So as Goku starts to run to him, not instant transmission, but run to him, right? He <laughs> notices a spaceship flying above. And he goes, who's that? And this is, and I'm, I'm sorry, I forget this dude's name. Uh, what was his name again? That, Freaking, uh, that Namekian guy and oatmeal. The Namekian. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. 
no, 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 wait. Oatmeal, oatmeal is the, the AI. Yes. Right, okay, okay, right. So, the Namekian, oh, 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 Monaito, that's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so Monaito's in the spaceship, and he's flying to the scene, right? And Monaito says, Oatmeal, was that the Saiyan who Granola is tangling with? Because... Manito had a certain look on him on the window when he saw Goku. We'll get to that, right? And so he goes, correct. There is another as well. Of all the crazy things, Manito says. So then uh, the blast is still being like, like, yo, Granola is really just, he's trying, he's charging this John up to be as big as possible. Vegeta's just standing there, not even budging. So then he goes there, Granola down there. So Goku's still trying to run at him. Or he finally actually, he must have instant transmissions or something because he does end up behind him. But because the blast, the, the impact, the energy of this death ball looking technique that he was about to dish out to Vegeta was so strong, Goku couldn't even get any closer, right? So then he goes, uh, uh, Granola goes, we meet our doom together. Granola, uh, uh, Manito goes, no. He, and he opens up the, the, the spaceship window. He goes, knock it off, Granola. And then everybody stops. He goes, Manito, you're here? Why? And then that's when Goku takes the opportunity to shoulder check him. So he shoulder <laughs> checks him, knocks him down. He goes, don't be stupid. You too, Vegeta. What are you thinking? And Vegeta just laughs. He's like, hmm, right? He and that and I, I didn't even like this smirk because Vegeta was just like I, I took that. I oh my god! Like I, I looked at that and I was just like, he really was about to die. And Vegeta was like, exactly. Why are you laughing it off? Like you really just acting like a bitch. Don't act like hmm, I would have been fine anyway, Kakara. Shut the fuck up. No, you wouldn't. Have. Yeah, shut the fuck. Exactly. I'm tired of this shit. Come on now, I'm tired of this shit. Anyway, Granola he goes you again. And then oatmeal. Oh, he says, oatmeal, I should have known. Meddling in my business. And then Monaito walks out of the ship. And then Goku goes, huh? Vegeta, with the same type of expression. It's like, is that an Amekian? And Goku goes, how? What's a an Amekian doing here? Granola says, why did you interfere, Monaito? Stand back and let me finish this. I just want to end. I just want it to end. I need this to be over. And then here goes the plot twist. And this is literally what saves the entire chapter for me. Yep. Right? Because I was not expecting this. This was not something that neither of us predicted or speculated or even imagined or thought would happen. And that's where I was like, okay, this, sa this moment saved the entirety of this chapter of this arc. Because I, I was just like, like we, we were seeing how things were going, even with some of our predictions and then some of those things altering a little bit to just turn out to be worse. This saves it a little bit. It does have some 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 credit to it. We'll see how it goes, but let's get to it, right? When Naito steps out the ship and he says, you've got some facts wrong, Granola. Sorry to say, it was a lie of mine that brought you here. There was one Saiyan who didn't earn your vengeance. And let me see. Let me let me tell you this right now, Kai. Okay, let me tell you this right now. When he said there was one saying, before even looking at the next page, and I, I'm I'm reading this shit double page format, right? So I see both pages, but my I, I'm training I'm training my eyes to see the individual panel before I see all the dialogue yeah. and shit, right? So when I saw him say one saying, I'm like, tell me it's fucking Bardock. Tell yeah. me. It's fucking Bardock, right? So he goes, explain. I don't understand. He goes, 40 years back, though, the one who actually saved us was a Saiyan named Burda. And I said, oh, yo, and Goku, daddy. Goku's sitting there like, huh? And Vegeta's like, wait, I've heard that name before. Yo, that's what I'm, oh my God. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that shit is fire. Because think about it. Let's think about this, okay? The only time canonically, and I hate using that, but we have to, right? The only time in the main 
source material of Toriyama's story from the manga gospel that we all know that this dude Bardock I'm calling him by the American version okay I don't know Burdock okay I'm not cooted in either okay I'm Krillin son all right so Bar the only time this dude Bardock from what I can remember was ever mentioned was was probably during the Frieza shit right when they was on Namek and Goku shows up and he fights him because other than that they had that uh, of course, the 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 story of Bardock or whatever, that that TV special, which uh, is not a movie. People mis misconceive that a lot. That is not a movie, even though it was shown in theaters. It was not a movie. So by that decree, it has a place in the overall story of uh, Dragon Ball. However, obviously with Dragon Ball minus and uh, Broly kind of retconning those things a little bit, Bardock was last uh, seen through the Broly film, but has never actually been in an episode of Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, nothing. This is the first time that his character is actually going to play an important role here, I think. I would like to think. And so then the last bit that Granola says is, did I hear that right? A Saiyan was our savior. And like Goku, this was great. I, I'm glad that they did this. Goku had a confused look. He's like, who the fuck is Bardock? <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, Vegeta, he had like that, like his speech bubble type was like a, what? what? Like, I, like you said, like, I know that name. Like, what? <laughs> I've heard that guy. Like, Goku's Goku's speech bubble says, I didn't understand anything that just happened. Vegeta's speech bubble says, holy shit, I see the whole picture. Right. <laughs> All right. So, so there you have it, right? That's the chapter. That's where the chapter concludes with a huge cliff cliffhanger which i'm hoping the next chapter is all backstory straight up at least a good portion of it to explain exactly what happened back in the day and if we see some bardock we're gonna see some bardock the 100 percent guarantee we're gonna see some bardock and that's gonna be fire see when when uh monaito like saw goku out of when he was like looking out the ship and he was like is that the saying he was fighting and like he recognized him or whatever right i was like huh i was like maybe he knows him because you know the freezer fighters some shit maybe you know the namekians you know stayed in touch and he knows like oh hey no this is a good one or something but then he went and like said that there was one saying i was like he can't be talking about bardock yo <laughs> i was like this i was like we're not doing this right now are we oh but we are apparently apparently and like What's crazy is that Dragon Ball, there's a narrative here. There's a lot of, <laughs> there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of shit, but then there, there, there is some good that comes of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is the Febreze right here. <laughs> it, all, it all don't stink, okay? Because when stuff like this happens, this is when Dragon Ball is at its greatest. When they do shit when you don't expect. And that goes with like anything, really. But when it happens with Dragon Ball, like, oh, let's go. Like, I get excited because this is the shit that I'm here for, you know? I want I want more lore. I want more backstory stuff. I want, I want these alternate or other perspectives of shit that went down all these years ago. You know, I want all this story building. Now, what I want to say before we get into this highlighted comment, right, is to the whole Bardock thing, right? I think that what might happen, this kind of can go with what uh, a little bit of speculation or, or my theory going forward with this arc is that I think that what Granol, I'm sorry, what Naito is going to explain to all of them, the story he's about to tell is that, yes, the Saiyans did come through and destroy, you know, their planet and their towns and, you know, they killed people and whatnot. But I have a feeling that some of that might have been true granola probably remembers visually seeing it he lived through it as we saw in the backstory or the little flashback moment that we had in this very chapter but i want to feel like and i, I kind of think that this is kind of the direction they're leaning in bardock 
had a change of heart during all of that. And he probably, through this section, through this little thing that happened back in the day, 40 years ago, as they put it, he, this is when Bardock started to evolve as a character. Because if you remember, if you look at uh, the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie, what happened in that section? Bardock was there and he was already not fucking with Frieza. And he wasn't, he, he, he was not about this life no more. He was like trying to change low key. I feel like that moment that he's having with the Ceruleans happened obviously before the Frieza shit, clearly. I mean, yeah. So I, I think that, that that's gonna be really cool to see, to be honest. Now, I also have to question, if this happened 40 years ago, Meaning, 40 years ago is when Bardock died? Or no, not now. I'm sorry, not when he died, but that was when he was alive. So 40 years ago, that was when we last saw this dude, apparently, right? How old is Goku right now? I mean, Isn't he like 50 or some shit? He's, he's getting there, especially with them time chamber years adding up. <laughs> like, he's at least in, like, I, I don't, that's the thing. Like, is he, he has to either be like 42, 43, 44, Yeah, maybe. I was going to say, he's got to be mid, like higher mid 40s. Because that, that's what I'm saying. Because like, with the, with the, again, with the Dragon Ball Super him. Broly. Is right. Yes. That is, that much we know. Right. And that would, and that, that clearly lines up with his reaction because, you know, all these Saiyan warrior elites, like they definitely have to hear of each other and shit. And he's, and Vegeta is a prince of the Saiyans. So he probably knew, you know, at least, you know, some of the up and up guys, I'm sure, you know. Um, but when it comes to the whole conversation of does this line up properly, I think it does because remember with Dragon Ball Super Broly, Goku was seen as a baby, not fresh out the womb. Before they sent him off to Earth, my man had a, a couple years on him at least. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I feel like we might even see baby Goku in there in this little flashback. Maybe we'll see. Well, depending how the scenery and like all that shit goes, it really depends. But. That's what I feel like this new retcon thing is. Like they're really going with this retcon, and that and that that much is at least good. They're they're at least attempting to be um, a little bit more consistent with the story that they're trying to tell, um, with all this newer stuff that they're adding. It was all this backstory things and whatnot. So, what are your thoughts on uh, everything? I mean, you you got it. I don't. I don't gotta say nothing. Okay. I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for this flashback. Whatever it's gonna be. I'm ready for story time. I'm ready for flashback time. I'm ready for all these saints to sit the fuck down, have some tea with the Namekian, and just listen to what actually happened back then. Cause I feel yeah, like actually. it could have been some like maybe, you know, we've seen like canon or non-canon. I don't give a fuck what we're talking about right now. So there's right. your warning. But we've seen we've seen Bardock as, you know, still a hard ass, still a Saiyan, still kind of a savage. Even when he was being a nicer person and he was trying to turn over a new leaf, he was still, you know, he was still a hard ass. So I feel like maybe the whole thing of saving them, even though Granola's like, but the Saiyans, you know, they're the ones that destroyed our city. They're the great apes. They're this and that. I feel like maybe Bardock just, you know, threw them a little warning was like, yo, we about to go fuck up your town. Go get your, you know, hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your waffles. <laughs> uh, what, why the waffles? <laughs> you never seen that? No, All I right. don't think I have. But yeah, I, I feel like I feel like it could have been on some escort energy. I feel like um, they could definitely still, because because we haven't seen much of Bardock, especially not in you know canon terms. I feel like that whole thing of him potentially i'll say potentially having the ability to see the future like what if he really did you know have time to warn some people that some shit was going down he just couldn't afford to stop it because he was looking out for his life and his family wow that'd be interesting well the whole the whole future site thing that only happened in I know. his uh 
in the yeah in that freaking the short john it did TV but special but in every single game and like every single scene that's been made within the past 10 years of bardock dying you always see some flash forward to the future type shit and that's why i'm wondering are they really gonna like are they gonna throw this in now because it's so well known I wonder. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's actually a really good question because they do like to kind of pick and choose from shit. Exactly. You know? Especially when they bring him back. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not saying yeah. he has it, but I'm saying that you know it's well known that that's something that it's not out of the realm of possibility for them to be like, mm. <laughs> actually. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. I I, I get that because because I'm uh, I guess what I'm I'm going off of I'm going off of the Super Broly movie. Because yeah. like I, I I figured if he did have that ability, they would have shown that in that film. Because that's, that's kind of like where it happened, like setting wise in comparison to the original um, Bardock story. So, but yeah, I mean, it would it'd be interesting um, if they decided to go with that moving forward. Even though I mean, this dude is, you know presumed dead along with the rest of the freaking race of saiyans right but i'm like a, a part of me is like you know i don't really want to even think this like i really don't but it's just it's like uh like i just can't help it it's full power podcast you know we're out here out of control we're just talking and <laughs> shooting shit and a part of me is just like do you think they're gonna bring this guy back ah <sighs> I hope it's only through <laughs> flashback form, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to say a good 99% of me is on that side. The 1% of me is just like, oh, yeah, bring his ass. I, I want them to be some some bullshit, super Dragon Ball heroes head ass situation that Bardock is now a part of the story. And then, and then it's like Goku or like, yeah, like Goku wants to actually know of his past and his family and all that shit. That would be ridiculous, but Goku I don't, don't know. want to know about his past and his family. Goku want to know how strong his dad is. He trying to scrap. Okay, see, you shouldn't have said that because now we're about to be here for another hour because, <laughs> oh my God, I can't, I don't understand how you can say one thing and I immediately think of an entire fucking arc this is like this is how right this is how we got here on a podcast because our phone calls would be out of control for too damn long we'll just be sitting there <laughs> just coming up Facts. with stuff oh my god dude okay so i will you know what yeah let me just get it over with because i i, I don't want to forget this right so this 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 backstory happens Monaito tells them the whole story. He tells them about Bardock. Mar uh, Monaito, like he says that he, he mentions like you look like Goku looks like him. And that's what I like. And he thought that he was Bardock. And then maybe Vegeta makes the connection. And he's just like, I think that's your dad. Right. And then Goku then be gets then gets curious. And then he wants to fucking like, you know, fight him or meet Wish him his dad or back we, oh my god does all that shit and then boom like they like think about it just let's let's just think here there's no actual there's no actual reason to not have this happen especially with how what what, what kind of powers that be exist in this entire franchise right now because and here's what i'm getting to right it's not just about bringing bardock back we can bring the whole fucking race back okay why is that we have the super dragon balls if they really why? wanted to they could do that why do you need the super dragon balls i'm just saying in, in case in case the regular dragon balls couldn't do it but because you know shenron beyond his that I actually have no power to do that. Sorry. You're not wrong, which is unfortunate. But it's like they were killed by Frieza, not by natural causes. Frieza ain't natural. Facts. We still barely we, we barely even know what gender Frieza is. That is so true, to be honest. <laughs> now that I think about it, wow. That's damn, that's I mean it doesn't even matter, Yikes. to be honest. <laughs> but like you know what I mean? Like 
they could really go in that direction where it's like the the, the, the insane resurrection arc or some shit like that. Yeah, they're they're and setting it up. They they could go in that direction. I hope they don't. I don't think they will. But if they do, okay. Yeah, imagine that shit because you know it's really weird because you'd think. And I was just like, why haven't, hasn't anybody thought of this earlier or sooner? And I'm not even talking about like us, like people, us, like IRL. Like I'm talking like Vegeta. I mean, my man is the prince of all Saiyans, a dead race. Like, don't you think as a prince who is, would, at, you know, at some point you would assume he would want to be the king, right? Like if he's all about his redemption and vengeance and, you know, being all about his Saiyan pride, why wouldn't he even think to wish all of them back? Like to wish his race back, the planet, you know, like that would be sick. And then imagine at that point, we see them separate. Vegeta goes off to, you know, be that prince, that king of his, of his race. And Goku stays on earth. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how you split them up. <laughs> I think that shit would be kind of interesting if they ever did some shit like that. I'm sure it could definitely be elaborated a lot better, yeah. but this is just me spitballing right now because, you know, that that what you just said, it sparked that thought. Because, like, I'm thinking, like, well, if they ever decide to bring Bardock back or if he ever is, it was if he just never died somehow, which would be fucking bullshit as well. Yeah, um, I definitely like, would. Yeah, like... You know that in itself would be insane i definitely think that would be insane and again no one would expect that considering with all things considered um excuse me but yeah like i feel like if they're gonna if they're gonna go that if they're gonna take that step then fuck it might as well might as well give my will give Go, goku's kids some grandparents you know bringing guinea you know <laughs> um so yeah, like, I feel like that that'd be interesting. But um, anything you want to add on before I go get to the highlighted comment no, that I've been hyping I need up to all hear episode. about this comment immediately. All right. So this comment has everything to do with what we felt about Vegeta's regression, right? His character regression, right? right. And I'm not gonna lie, this person really put me on to a whole new train of thought. And it helped me understand the situation a little better, which then in turn helped me appreciate the chapter overall a little better as well. Um, so he, they, they go to say, uh, they go to say, I think with Vegeta, it's not character regression. If you look between the lines with what Vegeta says, also from the title of the chapter, you can tell what the author is trying to, to convey to us by that. And he says by that, I, I mean, is Vegeta is the prince of all saints because of that he sees himself as the embodiment of them. That is why he brings up his Saiyan pride when questioned by Goku. And he feels he is responsible for the Saiyan's actions, which is why he tells Granola that he has a right to hold a grudge against them. And if fate has decided that Vegeta to die as the embodiment of the Saiyan's past, then he will accept it out of guilt. This is why Vegeta acts aggressively towards Goku, because even though Goku is a Saiyan, he was brought up as an Earthling, and Vegeta doesn't want him to face the consequences, whereas on the other hand, you have Granola going through this mental battle trying to deny that he is becoming what he hated as you see Vegeta questioning him. So this is a battle mentally and physically for both which makes the character progress. And some people thought Goku was shifting his internal organs to counter Granola's strikes this past chapter. The word in Japanese is... And they put characters in there. I don't know how what that says, which I guess means critical slash weak point. So Granola's strikes are akin to acupuncture. Goku is just shifting his body fast enough to send Granola off target. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's literally what to to that last part. That's literally what we 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 want we thought would make the most sense that he actually did. But the way it was translated made it seem like this dude is shifting fucking vitals and organs and he can perform surgery on somebody I didn't if he wanted to. I think he to. was doing all that. 
Yeah, but this this actually makes more sense that he's just able to shift his body fast enough. That's like literally what, like, you know, to move in a certain angle or something like that. It's the same thing, right? So that, I'm glad that was cleared up. But what do you think about this regression actually being a progression at the end of the day? I definitely agree that the mental battle is a lot more interesting than the physical one happening right now. But I don't think... I don't I don't find it as a progression. I still think that if anything, it shows I'll you know what? Instead of a regression, I'll take the fact I'll take the fact that we're at a standstill actually. I'll take okay. a fact that you know whoever wrote that definitely, you know, definitely knows this shit and definitely thought about it pretty deep because it adds up and it makes perfect sense. A little too much sense for Dragon Ball lore if you ask me. Mm, and yeah. Uh, I definitely, I definitely see that being a thing. I just feel like his, his comment, um, when he was like, you know, fake talking to Beerus, when he was just kind of like, oh, you know, like I couldn't, I couldn't pull it off. I'm sorry. Yada, yada, like all that. I feel like that shows that he was trying to, it, it seems like he was trying to revert to his older ways because of a desire for more power in you know the ways that he was being taught but when you want to talk about it from a characteristic point of view i would call it a standstill i, I would have called it a regression but now this is i'm changing right. my opinion to standstill because if he really is holding in all that guilt you know like feeling responsible because yes he was you know a dirty saiyan back then who's turning over a new leaf so all that stuff makes sense for him to have piled up on his shoulders but he has to let go of that because that's not that's not his fault it was his it was his upbringings you know it was his entire race it was all that stuff so if he's not able to move past that if he's bounded by that how can he go farther right hey that's that's and that right there is what's gonna help him unlock the actual full ultra ego like mastered you know what I'm saying? Because if 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 he's going down a similar path like Goku was, Goku took the defensive route with Ultra Instinct, with the instinctual shit, the Migate no Goku. -i. And then he's going the destructive route. I feel like since they're pretty much yin yin and yang, right? That's just how these these characters have literally been their entire uh storyline wise. I feel like he will definitely have a mastered form of that ego shit. All right. Um, because once he once he makes that connection that he can't bear all of the sins of his entire race that has been a thing for several years, he probably even before his own existence, you know, he cannot, you know, he, he can't he can't bundle all that and put it all on his own shoulders. I mean, yes, the pride part is really important because Vegeta is probably one of the most prideful Saiyans you could ever ask for. But there's a difference between having pride and 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 just feeling guilty for shit that you never, you know, like you, you didn't really you're not the reason behind all of that. That's literally how you were you were brought up and that's what you used to do too, you know? However, this kind of this comment also lines up a little bit with when in the last arc, when Vegeta, when they went to Namek and he started feeling it all over again and all those memories came back to him. And that's when the guilt started. He felt actually guilty, like he had to repent. And so that's why he put himself out there to essentially protect these the, these people because of his past and he's a truly a changed man he's a changed everything for the better and combining that uh combining that thought and that you know those events with what's going on now it is i, I guess i have to i definitely have to agree with you it's like it's more of a standstill because like it what would have made it seem like a full progression some of the things that he said in this chapter as well in addition to with you know the Beerus comments that he was making it, it sets him back a little bit 
you know and that's why it brings it to like a kind of like a standstill he's not really progressing or regressing he's kind of just like in the same spot because he's doing a little bit of both like he's doing a little dance like he's 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 you and then he's taking a step back you know like you know he's going he's going forward and he's going back and and it's not even a bad thing to be honest because sometimes characters they fall back into the same habits um and this happens with people you know that's just the thing it's very real um but obviously in a in a story like this where you know there's even if it's it's a, if it's if it's ongoing and it's like longer and a character starts out a certain way and then they kind of evolve into uh an, an um, a better you know you know that, that's figurative I, I guess as well but they, they they evolve into something different right sometimes you know well no yeah like let me finish that thought like when that happens um readers and viewers will expect that shit to, to stay that way or to improve that's like you know that's the whole idea behind character progression and development that's how all that shit goes so the second you see that character do some old shit immediately everybody goes online and they go into the comment section of whatever that shit is and they start chatting they start typing they start voicing their uh aggressions and their feelings about how this is this is wrong this character wouldn't do this they already did this this is going backwards not forwards like but they don't under, they, they fail to realize like sometimes people do fall back into a bad habit and whether you call this a bad habit or not the fact of the matter is vegeta had a moment to himself where he literally looked exactly like he did during the majin Buu shit where he was where he was a majin himself where similar to this he sought out power and he sought it out in a, in a very bad way where it was more on the evil side he tapped into his old evil self or so we thought but realistically he was just trying to you know get that strength up and so that he could best goku and even that wasn't enough because goku was hiding super saiyan 3 from him and then he was trying to defeat boo he was trying to be the one couldn't do it so what did he do he essentially gave up he said this is it and he does a fucking technique that was supposed to take out boo but it didn't it just took himself out similar to that moment here we have a guy that's literally about to put themselves both out where he sought after power, a new path of destruction from the God of Destruction. So it's like, we are seeing a lot of similar things that we've already seen before. And I can understand why, if you're listening to us talk about this, that you also thought that this is regression. I feel like, in a sense, it definitely is. But it's, 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 it's in combination with all of the other things that are going on with this character as well you know the changes that have happened the the self guilt and th the repentance that he's trying to to do and take all of that combine it with all of this and it's a very complicated character vegeta is a complicated dude he's gone through so much that with all of this evolving that he's done over time the changing you know it, it, it there's gonna be some complications and it definitely makes sense that he might even resort to feeling like he how he did right before granola was about to off him for good you know i feel like it all makes sense after you 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 think about it like that just because so i uh i i'm definitely with you on the standstill yeah Whew. Well, that was a freaking uh, a doozy, a, a great chapter, a great discussion. Um, outside of that, I don't think there has been anything else Dragon Ball wise that has gone on. I don't know if you've caught anything out there. I haven't. In the interwebs. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think since the last time we were here with you guys, I'm pretty sure... Uh, they, I think they were doing something with Dragon Ball Fighters, but I think it was. Uh, I'm not. I don't even know. I think. It, I think the game just got updated, 
um and then everybody got buffed like literally everybody um which is cool i eventually have to get back to dragon ball fighters at some point let me know when you do hey so but yeah that that here does it guys kai you got anything else you want to add talk about leave with the people a lasting thing any messages anything you got um what are your thoughts on the whole bardock thing do you want to see him in flashback form in person get wished back what's going on there oh man well like, like I, wanna, I said i want to know what people think about that yeah yeah I, I definitely agree with that definitely let us know your you guys thoughts about the bardock situation if anything that i had said before maybe uh enlightened any of y'all to possibly think well hey if they do it right then why not bring them back <laughs> like let us know that'll definitely make for an interesting uh discussion for possibly the next episode which i'm hoping we can uh definitely attempt to make this a weekly thing as intended right um so look forward to that and also uh look forward to uh video versions again with us on camera so you can see all the shenanigans happen right before your very eyes um so that's so uh that's more of incentive if you're only listening to the audio only to definitely check out the youtube versions as well but that that'll be uh i don't know when exactly that's gonna happen but i just know uh it will eventually yep. we'll get to that point but thank you guys again for tuning in to yet another episode of the full power podcast it's been your boy Ooze, the homie Kai, and we will see y'all next time.